Hello, this is Kathy Salisbury, the director of the Ambler Arboretum of Temple University. And today, our virtual walk is taking us into the woods. You probably have read that the Ambler campus, which is also the Ambler Arboretum, is now also a research field station. So the Temple Ambler field station. And um, what that means is that it's part of a network, international network of research field stations and now is a place where research and data, um, research will happen and data will be gathered and um, it will be used to contribute to a larger body of knowledge. And we're really excited about that. Um, there's a partnership with the Smithsonian and it, it's happening all under the direction of Dr. Amy Freestone, who's in the um, biology department. And so there's lots more information on our website that you can read about this. And um, there's also ways that you all, as the general public who come and visit us, when you're able to come and visit us, can actually help us gather data. So we are, of course, working with faculty, um, researchers from various universities and organizations, but also we are looking for help with our citizen science. So we have a number of ways that you can contribute to our citizen science initiatives. That means that when you're out here walking around, you will, um, you have the opportunity to contribute notes about what you're seeing in various apps like iNaturalist and uh, note what you're seeing. And that helps us better understand what's going on here in the Arboretum and on the campus. As far as habitats, it, help us, it helps us set baselines for the research and for any um, mitigations or restorations or conservation efforts that we want to put in place. So I thought what I'd do today is just take you on a quick walk down one of the woodland trails that we have here. And so if you walk along Loop Road, which is the outer road of the campus, um, you probably have noticed these signs pop up. And these are indicating where our trails are. You can see that they're wide, well-maintained trails. And you'll see these entrance to the woodland trails here. And so it goes through a perimeter meadow, which you see here. And these are all everything on campus, whether it's in these naturalistic areas or in the more formal, highly managed and manicured areas, everything is up for research. And it's really exciting because, you know, it's, it's great that we can have people come here and take a look and learn and teach us something about our space. So what you might be noticing is a lot of trees down as I walk through here. So you can see it's, I mean, it's frozen this morning, but it's relatively smooth. It can get muddy here, but you might notice a lot of trees down and that is because we have a significant population of ash trees here and um, they were unfortunately like most of the ash in the country at this point were infested with the invasive emerald ash borer which slowly worked its way from the midwest out to the east coast and um they take the beetle, the emerald ash borer, is about the size of your pinky fingernail. And they take about three to five years to kill a tree once they've infested the tree. So sometimes you don't know you have it until your trees start dying. And then um, almost all of the ash trees have died. We have found some that were not affected. And so we're hoping that they have some sort of resistance to the emerald ash borer. And um, as they propagate, they will pass that resistance along to the next generation of ash trees. But for now, we had to, along the trail, we had a lot of ash trees taken down. And of course, storms have taken them down because ash get very brittle when, um, when they're dead and they just sort of break apart. So, so you will see a lot of that. Um, the trail is also heavily invaded with invasive plants. And this is very typical of spaces that were once agricultural fields. So all of what we're walking through now used to be agricultural fields, used to be farm fields. And then they were just left to grow fallow. And then the plants that came in came in. And now 
um, what you have are these opportunistic plants that come in and settle in this space. And the space um, becomes, sometimes it becomes invaded because these plants that are introduced from other places are more aggressive. They don't have checks and balances. They're less picky about where they grow. And so they're able to settle and colonize an area more quickly than our native population, native of, of native plants can. And so we have um, Japanese stiltgrass and multiflora rose and um, all kinds of invasive plants. But even though we do that, even though we have these invasive plants in here, we do have still wonderful stands of native plants. We have a terrific um, colony of black walnuts, which is great. Um, very important for wildlife, very important as a native food source and habitat for our animals. And this is still a habitat space. We've uh, in our, this is the area that we inventory for our bio blitz when we host our bio blitz, which is a 24 hour period of inventorying every living thing in a space. And so we do that here and we still have a, a great diversity of insects and birds in these woods, but we could have a greater diversity um, and we will have a greater diversity when we start our restoration and conservation and research efforts in here. Of course, if you have walked these trails or been to the Arboretum at all, you have seen deer. We have lots of deer here and that is a challenge too. And the deer are a challenge um, because they take away the understory. The next generation of the plants that are supposed to grow in these woods are taken away by the deer, by the overabundance of deer. They eat the herbaceous layer, they eat the shrub layer, and then there's no next generation of trees and shrubs. So we are working on ways um, you know, to figure out how we can deal with that problem. So those are constant conversations. You probably have walked around the Arboretum and seen fencing and posts around our smaller trees, and that's to protect them from the deer. So we have about a mile, oh, actually almost two miles of trails through the woods here on this side of campus, easily accessible from Loop Road in multiple locations. The uh, ribbons that you see here they're delineating the different loops of the trails and eventually we'll have trail markers and um, it'll be labeled and we even could have somebody name the trail system wouldn't that be cool so so that's what we're working towards but i use this while i'm teaching to teach about it's a great trail for teaching invasive plants and um, we have other instructors, other faculty who teach using this trail to talk about habitat and restoration and um, ecology and um, ecosystems. So you can see here, it's a kind of a wall of white pine there. You'll see sometimes dog walkers back here, but it's just a nice um, alternate route when you're walking through the Arboretum. Like I said, I wouldn't come through here on a day after a rain, maybe, because the trail can get muddy. But on days like this, where it's nice and chilly and the ground is frozen, or on uh, no non-rainy days, it's quite lovely. And we, we back up, we have residences and schools and municipal buildings all along our perimeters here. So... Um, this time of the year, when the leaves are down, you get to see the neighbors more and see all that's going on around us. But in the summer, it's hard to tell. It's just very peaceful and quiet and um, secluded, not sec maybe secluded is a little too strong of a word, but it is a nice, shady, cool respite from the more open areas of the rest of campus. And so we're gonna just walk down here and 
you could add this loop to your walk and get some extra steps in if that's what you're counting or just be around and listen. Some of you may know who that bird was. Um, just walking over here this morning, I saw a red-tailed hawk and I've seen fox around here. And so there are a couple of loops here so you can mix it up a little bit. And we're just gonna take this loop. You can see we've put signage up explaining what this is, why it's here, what we're doing with it, and then we do have a website that if you're curious to visit and want to know um, what to do or how to, what you can and can't do in these spaces, uh, we have a website that tells you, for example, dogs must be on a leash. Right now you must be masked outside or inside on the campus. As long as you're on the campus, you must be wearing a mask. Um, of course, you have to be socially distant um, with people who aren't from your same household. We're following all the same criteria, um, but it is nice to get outside and wander. So can just see it. It was really sad. Um, I started here a little over three years ago and the ash trees, um, they were showing signs that they were infested but it just happened so quickly in my three years here that they must have just been infested, you know, in the year or two before I got here. And then they just succumb to the, to the emerald ash borer. And I've done other videos on that. And so you can find that on our YouTube page, the emerald ash borer video that explains what they do and how they kill the tree. And, uh, it's really sad. And, and sometimes you don't realize what a big, part of the ecosystem a particular plant is until they're all dying around you and ash trees are one of those trees that would come in first into those agricultural spaces and help colonize the area and so that's why in this area there's particularly heavy populations of ash trees you could probably get a feel for how many vines we have in here too. There's a lot of oriental bittersweet or Asiatic bittersweet in here. I learned it as oriental bittersweet, but now Asiatic bittersweet is more appropriate. And so um, there's just lots of vines and we're part of being a field station and a research opportunity is really, and where you all can help us is we're really curious to see what's going to come in and fill in that niche that the ash trees used to fill. So what is going to grow in now? What's going to come back and grow and fill those gaps? Is it going to be um, more invasive plants? We have a terrible problem with calorie pear here. Um, you know, are they going to take over? We have a lot of shrub honeysuckle here. The deer don't eat that and so that's taking off there's some great black cherries those are native and they're um, pioneer plants which are plants that come in and um, colonize disturbed soil areas and um, would maybe fill in so there's hope there maybe more black walnuts we're so curious so although it is a terrible loss it's a loss of habitat it's a loss of established trees um, we do have a creek that runs through here too. Another wonderful opportunity for research and wildlife sightings. Um, this time of the year is a great time to, because these, these trails do get a little muddy, um, but then when they're frozen, to look for wildlife footprints, for look, to look for tracks. It's a great opportunity for that. They, you can find all kinds of tracks and then learn about who is living here because the Arboretum is a habitat. We can learn about who's living here without actually seeing them. So, so that's a little walk on one of the loops 
of our woodland trails. And uh, we're so thrilled that you keep supporting us, that you keep visiting, that you go on these virtual tours with us. And we really can't wait until we can be together again in the gardens and for programs. But in the meantime, we're still doing virtual programs. The Arboretum Speaker Series is still happening. You can find out more information about that and other Arboretum programs by visiting arboretum.temple.edu. And you can find out more about the field station by visiting the Temple Ambler website. And with that, I will say see you later and um, enjoy the outdoors even on the winteriest of days. Take good care.